We're going to be reading this evening from Matthew, the first chapter, and uh, a bit the story there of the birth of Jesus. Let me read it to you. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, we've read your word there. I pray that it'll be living and active. And I pray that as I share what you've put on my heart for tonight here, that you will fill it with your Holy Spirit and prepare our hearts to receive what it is that you have for us as well. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. As I said, I love that drama. I love the interchange and the different kind of gifts that they had and the different kinds of gift givers that they, that, that, that they highlighted there. And, uh, and I love the way that then the drama moved to this side of the stage and turned serious and started to ask the question, what kind of gift giver is God? What kind of gifts... And does he give? Well, God is a good gift giver. And he gives good gifts. And not just to his children, but to everyone who he has created. He gives gifts to the people that he has made. Luke quotes Jesus saying about the Father, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. And then which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, although you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? He's talking there, Jesus was talking about prayer and about persisting. And he was talking about how the Father hears and the Father is a good gift giver. And he's saying that you, you, you're evil. But you know better than that. You give good gifts to your children. How much more so will God, your Father? Now the emphasis that Luke makes there is on spiritual gifts. So does Matthew in his account. And the Holy Spirit is the greatest gift then that God gives of the spiritual gifts. But in the book of James, James talks about more than just spiritual gifts. He says there in the first chapter, talking about asking for God, God for wisdom, he says if, if you lack wisdom, ask him for it. <clears throat> ask God, who gives generously to all. God is generous. He gives generously to all. And then he goes on a little later in the chapter to say that every good and perfect gift comes from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. So every good and perfect gift comes from above. He's a generous giver. He's always been generous. He is still generous and always will be generous because it's part of who he is, and he doesn't change. He doesn't shift at that. And so it means then that every good thing that you and I experience in life, everything that we rejoice in has come from him, has come from his generous hand. 
What are you thankful for in your life? What am I thankful for? Maybe for good health. Maybe for a spouse or a family or for parents. Maybe your job. Maybe, maybe a comfortable home. Maybe just a beautiful day. There's all kinds of things you see that we can be thankful for and grateful for, and they are good gifts. And they came to you from your Heavenly Father. He's a generous gift giver, a good gift giver, and he gives good gifts. But there is one gift that he gives that is the greatest gift of all. It is the gift that we celebrate, actually, at Christmas, and it is the gift of himself. That's what Christmas is about. It's about the, that's the significance of Jesus and his birth. It's the gift of himself to us. We read tonight about Joseph. He was engaged to Mary. He was pledged to her. But then she was pregnant. And he wasn't sure what to do about that. She was found with child. And he was a man who was righteous and wanted to do what was right. And he did not feel then that he could marry her. But he didn't want to shame her either. He didn't want to expose her to public disgrace. He was a good man. So he resolved to divorce her. Now, they were engaged, but in those days, engagements aren't like they are now, where you can break up and go to another girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. Engagement was like a marriage. It was a promise. It was a pledge. And you didn't just break it. It had to be a divorce. And then God intervened. An angel came to Joseph and said to him, Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. What is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. The son she will bear is from God, a gift from God. He will be the Messiah who was promised centuries ago, the one that your people and you have longed for all your lives. And you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And then Matthew editorializes. He steps into it and he tells us this took place to fulfill a prophecy. This is something that a prophet had spoken long ago, 700 years earlier, the prophet Isaiah. And he had said, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. This child is a promise kept. This promise, this child is a gift given. And this child is a gift from God. And the gift is himself. God himself in this child. Savior for his people. What I want to do in the next few minutes is to unwrap that gift. Unwrap the gift that of God giving himself. Four things that I want to touch on. The first is the gift of the incarnation. That's the gift of the manger. That's the gift we celebrate at Christmas. That's God coming from heaven to earth to be born in a stable, laid in a manger, a feeding trough. That's Christmas. God humbling himself. Becoming one of us, like us. Almost impossible when you think about it. Almost impossible to wrap your mind around it. God. A child. A baby. A helpless Baby, just like you, just like me, and born in a stable, laid in a manger. Born so that God would live life like we live it, as a human being, fully divine, fully human. 
He knew what it would be like to sweat and to be hungry and to experience pain. God giving himself in incarnation so that he would know us and know our lives and have compassion for us because he knows. And so whatever, whatever it is, whatever it is in your life or mine, he knows. He knows. And that's the gift of himself, the gift of the incarnation, the gift of the manger, to live with us, God with us. Second thing is the gift of atonement. That's the gift of the cross. That's the reason that Jesus came, to be the sacrifice for sin. He didn't just come here to be a baby. He did come here to live our life in this world. But he came to be the sacrifice for sin. To undo everything that had, been, that had gone wrong at the fall. When sin entered into the world, death entered into the world, separated us from God so that we could not get to him. It's like a wall in between that you can't get past. God with us? No, he's on the other side. He's away. But the point of the cross is to bring us together, to remove that wall. God cuts through that problem, you see, with the gift of himself, comes himself, is human like us, therefore can be the sacrifice. Do it over again for fallen humanity. It's the gift of himself to die for us. The gift of the atonement, the gift of the cross. The third thing, then, is the gift of the resurrection. This is the stone that is rolled away. Just as Jesus gloriously raised back to life in a new body, his body, a real body, a body that could eat, but also go through doors. An incredible new body. Death could not hold him. That's the stone rolled away. He was not just a sacrifice. He didn't just die. Death could not hold him. And so he's raised. And because of that, we share in that resurrection life. We too will be raised. And we have hope to be with him. And we have hope for our future there. And we can share in that new life with him because of the gift of himself. It's the gift of the resurrection, the stone rolled away, new life for us, the gift of himself. Fourth thing, and that is the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is the gift of God dwelling in us. Sent by Jesus after he returned to heaven. The whole point of it is he's not going to leave us as orphans. He said that to his disciples. I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I will send the Holy Spirit to you. He will dwell in you. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. God again. Try to wrap your mind around that. It's almost impossible again to wrap your mind around the thought that God is in me. This is as strange as God being born in a stable, being laid in a manger. God in me, God in you. And it's not that spark of divinity that sometimes people talk about. You know, the spark of divinity that's inside of every person, etc., etc., new age kind of stuff. No, it's not that at all. This is God. This is the Holy Spirit. This is a person separate from ourselves, completely other God, but giving himself to us to dwell in us, to live in us, to share himself with us, his thoughts, his mind, to console us and guide us, to remind us of himself, to commune with us. The gift of the Holy Spirit is God dwelling in us. It is the gift of himself to live in us. And so God is a good giver, and he gives good gifts. And there are so many things we can thank him for, but there's one thing above all else, and that is, at Christmas time, we're reminded, the gift of himself. 
That's the gift of the manger. That's the gift of Christmas. That's the gift of the child. That's the gift of Jesus. God is the good gift giver. And the greatest gift of all is the gift of himself. Why don't you stand with me? Let's pray. Father God, we love you. We are grateful to you. We thank you for the gift that you have given us in Jesus and that we celebrate at Christmas time the gift of yourself in a baby, the gift of your son in that child, yourself for us. And then in so many ways, the way that you were willing to die for us, the way that you were raised for us, the way that you shared the Holy Spirit with us, it's the gift of yourself. Thank you. And I pray that this Christmas, as we celebrate it together in family and other ways, that we'll remember a child that was born and see the gift that is given. And that our hearts will be open then to receive the gift of yourself to us. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen.